Let's take a look now at a big development in the United States. A new round-the-clock instant payment and settlement service is being launched next year by Federal Reserve Financial Services. The FedNow service will be the organization's first new business line in 40 years. It's also a massive opportunity to encourage broad adoption of instant payments in the U.S., given the Fed's role as a provider of payment and settlement services to the more than 10,000 financial institutions across the country. It's a major project, and I'm delighted to say we're now joined by Nick Stonescu. He's the Senior Vice President and FedNow Business Executive at Federal Reserve Financial Services. Welcome to Cyboss TV and, of course, to Cyboss 2022. It's good to see you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. But look, what is the status of the FedNow service? Because this, this really is a big deal. It is, it is. And I am very pleased to say that we are making great, great progress uh, on FedNow and we are ramping up for production. So you said... We're going to be ready in 2023. We recently announced that that timeline for going into production and processing transactions is going to be between May and July 2023. So that really created a lot of excitement in the industry. Uh, we have a lot of features and functionality with the first release of the service that is going to allow institutions across the U.S. to have access to instant payments and to be able to offer those to their customers, to businesses and consumers. So we're really excited about the opportunities that FedNow is going to bring into the market. Um, I would say we benefited greatly from having a very and very engaged uh, pilot program. So we developed a pilot program for the FedNow service. Actually, we started last year with an advisory phase and we got a lot of input on the service features and functionality and how we should design it and what's going to work in the very first release. We have moved towards onboarding pilot participants onto the service this year. And then more recently, we actually started technical testing, which is really, really great to see customers, banks, actually starting to put test messages through the service. And we actually had a couple of banks that were able to start testing with each other. So a lot of progress. We're huge gonna, turnaround, very rapid. Huge turnaround, yeah. So um, I mentioned pilot program, 120 organizations. We had to reshape the pilot program to accommodate the demand that we're seeing in terms of the, the engagement. It's a lot to, to manage through. We're going to move into certification next, and then we'll be ready for production uh, next year. So a lot, a lot going on. <laughs> Certainly sounds like a lot going on, Nick. And, and excitement is one thing, but the big question is, are the U.S. financial institutions and, and payment processes ready for the FedNow service? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. So uh, just, just to level set here for context, in the U.S. we have over 10,000 institutions of different sizes and diversity. So there's a lot of diversity in the banking sector there. Um, I would say the smaller and medium-sized uh, institutions generally are working with uh, processors and aggregators to get themselves ready. So they are looking at their core providers, the payment processors, to look to connect to the FedNow service. Um, we have the processors and aggregators very much engaged in the pilot testing. Um, so they're already, they're already processing uh, payments and they're bringing up the applications to date. Um, we also have a set of uh, banks and financial institutions that are working with their in-house development and also uh, technology service providers to get ready for, for FedNow. So th there, there is a lot that is happening in terms of uh, readiness for FedNow, and we're also looking to support that. So as part of the service, we are developing a very streamlined and digitized onboarding process. So it's easy for the banks to, mm -hmm. to come and connect to the service, to get themselves configured. We also have a lot of features and functionality that are uh, allowing them to connect to the service in whatever configuration they might want to connect. So 10,000 institutions, there are a lot of different ways to, to basically configure the service, and we are supporting uh, that diversity in the marketplace. So would it be fair to say that your expectations for adoption of this service are actually running quite high? Because given that the test pilot that you had and also the feedback, it does look good. There clearly is a gap that you've identified. The hunger is there. Yeah, I, I would say the hunger is definitely there. I would say that once we made that announcement uh, that we brought in the dates for the FedNow service uh, earlier on between 2023 to 2024 to actually doing it between May and July, it became even more real for the industry. So that, that hunger, I would say, overall, uh, overall increased. As we engage with the industry, um, certainly what, what we're hearing there is a lot of optimism 
uh, in terms of what the service can deliver, uh, how it can enable banks to, to compete uh, in the U.S. Um, we're also been doing a lot of um, pulling together the industry into early adopter workshops, so putting a lot of information about the benefits of the service and how the banks can take advantage of the service and enable instant payments for the customers. Ultimately, that's what we're looking for, right? It's to make sure that every institution across the U.S. has access to instant payments 24 seven a day, uh, hours a day, 365 days a year. So that, that availability and reach of instant payments in the U.S. domestic market. More broadly, Nick, what's the Federal Reserve doing to help support this adoption of instant payments in the U.S.? Yeah, so, so great question. I mean, beyond actually offering the service, uh, we're also gone out and done a lot of research to uh, explain to the marketplace and understand the benefits of instant payments. So we conducted research with businesses about their use and future uh, use of instant payments with, with end consumers. Um, and I can say for businesses in particular, we are seeing a lot of excitement and demand for instant payments. So uh, nine out of 10 businesses in the US see themselves transaction instantly in the next three years. Two, thir two thirds of them are actually gonna make a choice regarding the bank that they will select to conduct business based on availability of instant payments. And frankly, it's very similar for, for end consumers. Um, what was it? Somewhere around 70% of end consumers are actually going to, their satisfaction on their bank is going to depend on whether or not their bank is actually offering instant payments. Yeah, and that's so, one way for the bank to actually retain customer loyalty by offering that right, facility. Absolutely right. And, and ultimately, it's, it's really strategic for the banks to offer instant payments. It's going to help them compete with some of the other payment providers outside the banking sector. So it's really existential for, for the banks to, to get connected and offer this type of services to, uh, to their customers. Yeah, so, at the end of the day, we shouldn't forget that this is everybody's journey. It's not right. just the bank. They have to take the that's, customers with them all the way through the chain. That's right. Absolutely. So we wanted to, to put that research out there about the, the benefits and opportunities of instant payments. And also, we are doing a lot of education about FedNow and the use cases that we envision developing first. Uh, frankly, we're probably going to be surprised. There's going to be a lot of innovation that's going to happen on top of Fed now that we're not even thinking about it. I mean, we design the service with that in mind. It's a cloud-based service, high resilience. Uh, I think we're actually the first central bank that has developed a payment system fully in the cloud. So, so that, that's really exciting there. And, and so we certainly leaned in to support that kind of innovation uh, in the marketplace for, for the future. Which begs the question then, what is it going to mean for the US payments landscape? Because you're absolutely correct, it is quite innovative for a central bank to involve itself in this way, but is that involvement likely to encourage even greater innovation on the landscape seen generally for payments? Th that's what we see. We think that FedNow uh, as a service is going to dramatically change the payment landscape in the US. The availability of instant payments to over 10,000 institutions that is absolutely a game changer and one of the reasons why we decided to build a new service for the first time in, in, in four years there. So the innovation for the future, we're, we're the flexibility that service is going to offer. We're really excited about the, the opportunities going forward. Nick, I think you're going to be a very busy guy in the next few months. <laughs> <laughs> but look, thank you so much for joining us thank here on Cybos TV, Cybos TV. And hopefully we'll have a catch up next year in Toronto because there will be more to tell on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you. Nick, Thanks. take care. Take care.